Alright, welcome back. I'm glad to see you in this lesson and let us start working on the morphing. I want to show you several possibilities so you will know how to perform such a morphing and overall work with paths inside of shapes. Let me show you how to begin with the morphing. If you want to start with a shape, select a shape. If not, we need to establish a new shape layer which will have a path inside. This can be done by clicking G on the keyboard or here on the top selecting the pen tool and just drawing random three lines. It can be more, it doesn't really matter because we'll morph into a shape instantly. All right, let me open the shape layer. As you see the contents, shape, and we have as always our path. So this is our primary working area and this is the shape which we will convert into other shapes. There are a couple ways how you can do it. I will start from the most basic one, which can teach you a lot of useful things. Let us grab the first icon, maybe the Facebook icon, because it's fairly easy. And let me show you the first technique. The first technique is if you have any shape, you can drag it over into After Effects and you can make the morphing by hand. What I mean by that? Let me click on the Facebook one. I press T on the keyboard to open up the opacity property and I make the Facebook icon just a little bit less visible. So I see the triangle properly. I click on the first shape, I click on the path and I use a keyframe here by clicking on this little stopwatch. The first keyframe has appeared. Consider this little keyframe as it would hold information about what shape we currently have. So I'll move one second forward I click on the path here and by having this tool selected, I can do this Facebook icon manually. I'll click here to add a new point and I have it right. I click here to add another point and I place it here and I'll continue this work until I have a Facebook icon. This might be a little bit tedious, but this is the most simple and proper way to establish a perfect path from an icon we see above here. In a moment, I'll show you how to make this on autopilot. I just want to show you a few principles. Let me speed up this process a little bit. If you have a little corner here and you need the Bezier tools to make it rounded, you select the left alt key until such an icon appears. Once you click here, this particular point will have their Bezier handles and you can work with them. Okay. Let me continue by clicking and adding another point here and this other point will be here. This is how I would work if I would need to make this by hand, which is very tedious and hard, but it's very properly done. Let me deselect the Facebook icon and let us preview the morphing. On the first keyframe, we have the triangle. You see those points? And on this keyframe, we have a ready morphed Facebook icon. Well, it's not perfectly precise because I wasn't spending much time on it, but the idea is conveyed into this technique. I can press space and in a few seconds, the shape is becoming more points and it is morphing. Now, this was very boring and tedious. How to make it better, quicker, faster and more efficient while working inside of After Effects. Let me duplicate this shape. I will deselect the old ones. I have a new shape. Let me reposition it on the right. And I have here two pad keyframes. I'll delete the Facebook one. Let me delete the Facebook one. I have the first keyframe here. I go to maybe two seconds. And you can go, for example, and grab it directly from inside Illustrator. As I click here and I press Ctrl C, I go back to After Effects. And by having this path selected, I press Ctrl V, this little icon is appearing directly inside of After Effects. Right now it has shift a bit to the right. I can grab it and move it back to where the triangle was. What do we have now? We have a morphing with one click. Let me move ahead to the fourth second. Maybe grab the Facebook icon from inside here. Ctrl C, go back to After Effects, Ctrl V, and I have the Facebook icon. As you have noticed, 
After Effects is shifting it to the right again, but you can always click on the exact keyframe, put it back in position and we have the morphing basically ready. Such an easy trick, you can delete the first keyframe if you don't want the triangle and right now we are morphing from Twitter instantly to Facebook. Well, the Twitter is a bit too small and the Facebook is a bit too big. It would be also fairly simple by having this second shape layer selected, let me maybe delete the old one, which I was making by hand, I press the S key on the keyboard to open up the scale property. I put the keyframe exactly where the previous keyframe is from the path on Twitter and I simply make it a bit bigger. Well, because the anchor point is here on the right, it is moving to the left while making it bigger, so I need to press Y on keyboard to use the pen behind tool or the anchor point tool. I shift the anchor point just to be about in the middle of Twitter and now I can scale it from inside to this position. Okay, hit the shape layer, press U on the keyboard, it will reveal all keyframes which are set in this particular layer. I will go forward to the Facebook and I don't want this Facebook icon to grow. So I simply make the scale back to 100%. Okay, what do we have now? We have a big Twitter icon morphing into a Facebook icon while maintaining its size. I think it should be a bit more on the top, but this doesn't really matter. I just press V on the keyboard so I have the selection tool and I move it a bit towards the top. Okay, do I have the morphing right? Perfect. Right now it looks very good. Now let us go ahead and use the Pinterest icon. Well, maybe we want to use another technique now. So I'll go for the Pinterest. I import the Adobe Illustrator file and I put it back here. As I showed you previously, it's really simple to edit this Pinterest icon into a vector if we have the vector file here. You just hit layer and go to create shapes from vector layer. Boom, and we have the new shape. Well, how do we copy informations from this shape into the next shape? Well, this is very, very easy. Just open up this shape, content, group, path, and we have this path. Now set a keyframe anywhere you want, because now I must remember that this little keyframe holds informations about the shape to form it into a Pinterest icon. So if I control C this little keyframe, I select this path from the second shape layer and I paste it here, it will paste the informations about the Pinterest shape here. I just have to again reposition them. If you have any troubles with repositioning, just hit Ctrl or Command R to open up the rulers. Create a little guide for yourself. Just hold here on the side, put a few rulers. This is about the middle of the morphing I want to perform. Let me delete the Pinterest and let's preview what happens. Well, okay, I was a bit wrong. The middle was here, about here. Let's preview the effect. All right, Facebook is very nice. Pinterest is a bit off, but that's no problem. I just click it here. I position it properly. I think I will also set a keyframe for the scale, just in case maybe the Pinterest is a bit too big. And let me preview the effect now. I press space. Well, it's going a bit slow. It's morphing a bit weird, but that's no problem. We'll adjust it in a few moments. All right, what do I notice? That they are morphing too quick. So what you can do, you can copy this keyframe, move forward, paste this keyframe again here, and between those keyframes, nothing is happening. We have the Facebook icon and only the scale is changing. So we also have to copy the scale into the same exact position. So we have no movement at all and we are ready to go. Let's preview the effect. It's morphing the first time, it's staying as Facebook, it's morphing the second time and we are ready. Okay, right now we have learned how to morph from one shape to another. Before you jump into the work on your own, I want to show you something really important, not only about this morphing, but about 
every motion graphic work and overall graphical design you will be doing in the future. There is really something important you need to know about the first vortex which will really improve you as a designer. To find out what it is please head over to the next lesson and stay tuned.